It didn't listen to me. It walked out of the thicket. It turned around and looked at me. They looked up, and in this tree, there was a monkey man. And the monkey man jumped down out of the tree and started running away. And suddenly, they're right in front of the car. He slams on the brakes and manages to stop. And he's skidding because it's not quite, you know, um, gravelling. And for, literally for about a second and a half, they just stood there because they don't know where to go. And you tell them panicking, they're like roof flapping. Their 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 face is like twitching. Bigfoot Society. This is your host, Jeremiah Byron. Every week I talk to different people in the cryptozoology field. You never know who's going to be on next week. If you'd like to sponsor the show, head on over to patreon.com forward slash the Bigfoot Society. You get access to a ton of things there, including a close-knit cryptid community on Discord where you can connect with like-minded cryptid researchers and enthusiasts, weekly bonus content, the ability to hang out with each week's guest after the main show, exclusive merch, and much, much more. Welcome back to another episode of Bigfoot Society. This week I get to talk to friends Eli Watson and Carrick St. Laurent. Uh, they've got a project they're both working on together called the Manwolf Files. So here we go, another episode about Dogman, but this is kind of a different take on it. And uh, I'll be honest, this uh, it's a fun episode. Uh yeah, I'll, I'll let you figure it out as we go along. Uh, ha- always have a good time talking with these guys, and uh, we just we had a fun one. So, thanks for listening to another episode of the Bigfoot Society podcast. Eli, All right. three, two, one. Uh, welcome back to another episode of Bigfoot Society. This time, I have Eli Watson and Carrick Saint Laurent with me. Which, d- Carrick, did I say your last name right? I always have like I always go into like. You know, I'm not going to say it right. Did I? Did I get it though, Carrie? Uh, Saint Laurent. Yeah, Saint uh, Laurent. Saint Laurent. It's French, so you can really, no, you I can know, pronounce it either I way. Know. Ultimately, honestly. Uh, uh, you guys are so Saint cool Laurent. for coming on. Saint Laurent. All right, it's Laurent. Whatever. Um, we are going to have a good, good time. We're talking about. We've had some technical difficulties already, but we're we're blaring through it. It's going to be awesome. We're talking about the Manwolf Files, uh, which is your use guys's awesome series that's on youtube right now and um i'm digging it uh but let's start with who you guys are because there's a chance um uh, i've had both of you on and there's a chance some listeners may not know who you guys are so i'm going to take a few minutes I to think- introduce you but i mean eli uh, you're a pretty big name right now you mean uh no i think it's no? a good thing no? if you've never heard of me yeah, it's it's, all right. All right, cool. it's honestly for your good <laughs> it's been spared all right you let's know? start with eli um eli is a cool guy uh you may have seen him from things such as small town monsters uh the beyond the trail uh bigfoot series with alex petikoff um he's got this awesome playthrough series on youtube where he plays the king kong PlayStation <laughs> video game. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Yes, did you do. tell you about that? I did no, not did tell you him about that? that. I did not. You found uh, that. Buddy, buddy, I'm an investigative journalist, my dude. I found that myself. It's I haven't watched the whole thing, but it's awesome. <laughs> oh boy. You like Look, game, here I am. It's good. It's I'm good. upset that someone watched a video I put online for people to watch. <laughs> I know, right? Uh, let's see. Eli, what other amazing things should the audience know about you? Um, I guess the primary one is that in addition to Be On The Trail, I am a video editor. So I do a lot of editing for Small Town Monsters. So I've edited the vast majority of the Bigfoot Project episodes, mm-hmm. as well as um, I'm kind of like directing now the ridge um the latest series sasquatch unearthed the ridge and so basically seth sent me all this footage and just said go wild with it 
just create the narrative and um it's coming together it's daunting but it's coming together so that's amazing it, you also may uh recognize Car or eli from uh the amazing cryptid campfire podcast oh, of yeah. days of of yore yeah it's like oh yeah remember days that thing yore. i am I, well yeah, but... there's uh oh talks is this an of exclusive? a reemergence there's really? this is an exclusive you heard it here first <laughs> Wow. When I don't know, <laughs> that's all I can say. All right, fingers, fingers crossed, Bless. kids. Um, oh, guys, this is so unprofessional of me, but I'm gonna point it out real quick. Uh, you guys are in StreamYard, so you can see the chat on the side, right? Uh, I haven't checked mm -hmm. it, but yeah, I can see it. so I want to make you make sure you're aware. The cool thing about the Patreon is that they can actually watch this live too. So just be aware there are, you know, people hanging out with us live as well. I'm sure. sorry, totally unprofessional to me. But I think I let you know earlier. Anyways, wow, this episode is gonna rock, dude. Uh Carrick, let's go to you next. I'm so I'm so giddy talking to you guys. I you guys are super cool dudes. I met uh Eli and um he came out hung out with uh, alex we went to the van meter area we went to that bigfoot barbecue place it was great um we had Carrick dinner in the morning to, we did yeah that sounds uh, Carrick, like an art house film. is it with you it does. <laughs> <laughs> um so Carrick, your best i would say you're best known for uh the amazing uh cryptozoology documentary youtube channel crash course cryptozoology which is like wow uh the stuff you put out on there is really really cool well, thank and you hats off to you my friend uh you are a cool guy because uh you're one of there's a few guys that i always keep in mind where if i have a question about some like really random uh cryptozoology history trivia thing uh you're the guy i go to and uh and if you don't know the answer you you can really think of a lot of places to look uh, really quick, which is awesome. So oh, I, appreciate, I appreciate you for that, dude. I, I'm glad that I come off that way because I found that I'm uh, I'm forgetting a lot of dates of cases and things that I used to know. So I'm glad that I'm still useful for any historical purposes here. Totally, totally. Um, so let's talk about why I have you, you on tonight, guys. So when i first heard about uh the man wolf files i was like that's intriguing first i'm intrigued for the the obvious reason is why call it man wolf files mm -hmm. if uh carrick if if you could answer that and yeah and well eli, eli i don't think you. that i don't think you and i ever had a um a discussion on the title because i was working with a different researcher for like uh, maybe about three months on it previous to Eli's entry into the fray. Um, so I think at that point, the manual files was already kind of like a set uh, title for the series. Uh, why I chose the word or the title manual files for one thing, I guess I thought it sounded, it rolled off the tongue a bit better than like the Dogman files or the werewolf yeah. files and stuff like that. But I also just found that I really like the term man wolf, which is something that Linda Godfrey has been uh, oh. pushing a lot in her recent years for a kind of rebranding of the word dog man or, um, or, or wolf man or werewolf. And uh, there's a variety of reasons for it. But I, I think the main one being that she feels it's a bit more direct and to the point than dog man. Um, mostly because, you know, okay. her view on it seems to be at least that the descriptions match uh, a wolf in terms of the, the canine half of this, as a, opposed to like, you know, a mm. dog breed, let's say. Um, that's my best guess on it anyway. I haven't talked to her in quite some time. But yeah, I just thought it sounded very nice, the man wolf files. And I'm a graphic designer too. So when I think of a title, I think of how I'm going to orient that, what the text might look like and things like that. And I just found that man wolf just, it had, uh, you know, it's, it's a word that has visually speaking, a lot of different angles. You have capital A's and capital M's and a W in there and things mm -hmm. like that. And so you can kind of get this really, uh, geometric put together of those words. And I thought that that just really made sense in the font that I decided to use for it. So I think it was also an aesthetic choice. That's cool. I like that. I like that. That's a, that's a cool idea. Um, uh, Eli, let's go to you for this one. So, 
if you have to, let's say someone's like, hey, what's the manual files? What's the idea of this show? How do you how do you describe that? Yeah, so the Dogman Chronicles. <laughs> <laughs> the Dogman oh, wow. Chronicles. Wow. Um, That's amazing. No, the Manual Files is basically uh, an examination of the supposed evidence that we have for Dogman or werewolves and uh, specifically visual evidence. And unfortunately, most of it's fake. So. <laughs> maybe well, that's letting the cat out the bag but surprise <laughs> your life disappointment is just so thick <laughs> that he couldn't resist i just dude i'm i'm big disappointed i am i am so... too i am too that is, that is one thing that i think that i found um that people when they first talk to me about the manual files mm -hmm. think is that we're and i want to just preface with this they, I think a lot of people feel like we're out to like disprove this. That isn't the case at all. Every time we find like a thing that we, we might want to use for an episode, we like have our fingers crossed that this is one that leaves our heads, you know, us scratching our heads. Mm. Um, and we have had one or two, I think so far like that. So they're out there. Um, the pieces that are more confusing, but I, I got to agree with Eli in the sense that the manual files kind of developed into this series that, really as it examines these pieces we take aim at a lot of popular pieces of evidence for this reason because we find that some of the most well-known ones out there uh there's really solid evidence that they're faked um you know very definitively so that was i think a big part of the adventure of making the series was kind of unfolding that out the the reason one of the big reasons i like the series guys um is you're not just taking it's not like you're you're just two dudes taking pot shots at dogman you're like oh i like bigfoot better and dogman's <laughs> lame so let's get after him like it's really cool because you're taking i think a viewpoint that hasn't been done before where so there's episodes where you are examining uh spectrographs of audio you are looking into metadata of uh photos you are um really analyzing photographs in ways that you know you guys are going deep you guys are going well, thank deep you. thank you yeah that was uh, yeah that was a really big goal i think for the whole series was um I, I always feel like it's a very very high aspiration to say i want to do something that has not been done before and i don't i have not yet come across something that does exactly what the man manual files has does mm -hmm. has does has done so far mm -hmm. um that doesn't say that it isn't out there maybe it just hasn't gotten any traction and i hope that it does sure i love that kind of thing being very readily available and known um but yeah yeah um before this is a thought i don't want to forget so i'm going to throw it out here real quick but um I would love to see a Bigfoot version of the Manuel Files. That would be explosive. That would I mean, be cool. that would maybe be cool. maybe we'll just leave that at there. But uh, I would love to see you guys just look into you know pieces of like other cryptid evidence and really dig it up apart in the same way that you're like trying to prove or disprove these dog man mm. photographs so you guys are doing something super special and mm. like hats off to you well thank you thank you yeah we could call it bigfoot bureaucracy bigfoot bureaucracy <laughs> the, the bigfoot bureaucracy. exactly the sasquatch wow i, I couldn't think of an s word for the that sasquatch syndicate that's I, I think that's a thing. I think that's a thing, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> the the man ape files. It? The what? The man ape files. Oh, dude. Yes. Man ape the files. man ape files, man. Whoa. Think think about I'm just it. Doing it, it could... all man stuff. I feel yeah, like with Bigfoot, this is also, I think, what really just makes this format good for Dogman specifically. Okay. Is the problem with, with Bigfoot in a manual files context, I guess you can see this as a good thing too. There is an endless amount of material for any given episode. Um, mm. You know, you could examine one of at least a thousand different pieces of evidence that are actually very compelling. Uh, 
per episode. And with mm -hmm. the manual files, the way that I figure it, we have a, a whole season uh, finishing up on Monday here. So the eighth okay. episode is the season finale of season one. Mm. And with the cases that Eli and I have discussed, we have like a folder where we, we can put in ideas for episodes and things like that. Uh, I think that we have just enough interesting material for like, if we wanted to, like two more seasons. But I think we might like wow. be scraping the bottom of the barrel after that. Stuff okay. that doesn't really need its own mm. episode sort of thing. So it's... uh. It's finite, more so than Sasquatch evidence, but it's more doable because of that. Interesting, interesting. Well, maybe someday. Maybe someday. Tuck it away. Tuck it away. It's a it's a free idea. The idea for you guys. Um, I would love mm -hmm. to know the history about how did this? You know, was it like Carrot calls up Eli one day and he's like, "Hey, I got a great idea for these this man witch files or like what, what the man witch files?" Man -witch. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's, Eli, what's the history behind this? Well, Eli, I'll explain how the manual files originally came about, but first, I want cuz I don't remember it that well. How did I approach you about the manual files? I'm pretty Was it sure actually you just called up and said I had a good idea? Like that was it? I, I'm pretty sure that was it because I don't remember to be honest. <laughs> it's, I think I just, part of why we don't I, remember it was it was uh, in the water for a while. Um, mm -hmm. For like a solid, what would you say? Like maybe eight months or so. It was kind of on freeze. Wow, something yeah, like that. It was nothing happened with it for a long time. Yeah, so. and uh, part of the reason for that was. Um, and I, I won't name drop anyone here because, you know, when things fall through, you know, that's kind of like between people sort of thing. But I was right, working right. with another researcher and this was how Manual Files came about is I had worked with this researcher uh, on one previous occasion, but had done a similar format by myself before that as well, where I would do uh, a, a, I guess you could say like a, a video presentation with this person uh, looking at a piece of Dogman evidence and explaining how it seems to have been hoaxed what would lead us to think that and ultimately if we were sure enough trying to kind of like prove to the audience like okay well here's your evidence sort of thing okay. um and that was a, a really fun thing that we did and again we did that once and i did it once by myself prior to that with um the on away photograph which is one reason why the manual files might not look at those two pictures that we did just because those already sure. have their own forms of that online sort of okay. thing um but after th the uh working with the researcher on the second photograph, I said to him, you know, we should really make this like a web series or something, because this is like uh, crazy how, I mean, to, those were two of the biggest photos at the time. Um, and it was really, I thought, a phenomenal feat of research that we had been able to figure out how they had been hoaxed, not just that they were, had been hoaxed, but how they had been hoaxed. And, um, so the idea at first was going to be basically what me and Eli have going here, but instead of Eli, it was going to be the other guy doing narration. Okay. And um, Eli was not originally part of it. Things uh, planning with that guy's narration fell through. And so a little bit before that had happened, Eli had come on to uh, help with kind of like the background of mm. photographs. That's kind of the split role that ended up happening was I – do a lot of the analysis of the photo or of the evidence and Eli gives a lot of the backstory and he also does the narration, which he's actually okay. very good at because he's uh you did audiobooks for a while, so you've got some experience I in did. that. Whoa, <laughs> wait a second. <laughs> what audiobooks are you doing, my bud? Uh I All did right, a we'll, couple we'll, of... we'll drop it. We can drop it if you want, but no. really? No, okay. I was uh, no, yeah, I did All right, go ahead. I think I did four or five. Bigfoot related audiobooks. Um, what? Yeah, uh, they're on Audible. They're Amazon exclusive, so they're only on Audible. But if you just type in, uh, oh boy, I don't remember. I think you can just type in my name and it'll come up with the books that I've narrated. How in the world <laughs> did I not know this? Is this, an, uh, is this a long time ago? Yeah, because it, okay. uh, this was 2020 when I did most of it, and then. A little bit into 2021, I think I did my last one. The problem is, uh, audiobooks are actually a lot of work. Like a no, lot they of work. 
apologies so, we're going off of manual files for just a few <laughs> minutes because this is yeah, yeah. really just the most random thing i've heard about eli so um so continue audiobooks are a lot of work i've done a few they are a lot of work to make sure that you have good mic quality and then also mm -hmm. just you know you don't worry about this when doing a podcast but in an audiobook it's more noticeable the breaths that you take and the, yep. yep and the weird swallows that you normally do in conversation yeah. those are just not pleasant to listen to when you're listening to an audiobook so you have to like edit all those out and it's just it's a lot of work and then not everyone does this but i was really adamant on having a distinct voice for every character so that itself was a little difficult as well so did you write the books as well i did not i did not so one of the one of the authors the biggest book that i narrated and the last one i did was by a guy named d.a roberts oh who, yeah totally um, yeah yeah you know d.a yeah, yeah well so i, mean, I know he, the name he, yeah yeah uh, he's yeah. big into the dogman stuff but i i did Whoa. one of his um sasquatch novels i did lakeview man it was about uh a bunch of killer Bigfoots. It's it's cool. It reads like all an right, 80s right. kind of slasher flick, but well, that's, that's all I would say. So if people like download and listen to it, do you get like a certain percentage that kind of setup? I do. Yes. Perfect. Small percentage. Right. But, you know, I won't be honest. I am surprised how little DA gets, you know, uh, yeah. because but Amazon, are, yeah. Amazon yeah. takes a lot. And they do yeah. like the majority and so I just wish there was a better way to get stuff out there that took less of. Well, maybe we can get the links to those and I can put them in the show notes and we can get a few coins your way, my man. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. <laughs> okay. Back to man wolf. Sorry guys. Um, that just blew my mind though. So <laughs> man wolf, the quest. So, Hmm. That was the worst train derailing in the history of Bigfoot <laughs> society. I'm not even kidding. This is this is bad. Um, is there thinking of the episode so far, guys? And this question is for both of you. Is there an episode that has been uh, your favorite or the most surprising because of what you found out? Mm. Eli, what do you think about that one? most surprising yeah like like that they're all fake that um <laughs> spoiler alert they're all fake guys <laughs> i mean i don't know it okay the redwoods photograph is that what it's called hmm. yeah, yeah that yeah. one is where you do the analysis that's right yeah yeah, yeah that one was probably the biggest disappointment to me because i remember i mean i remember when that came out and i remember looking at it and firmly believing that it was real. And then the first time I took a deeper look at it was for the investigation for this series. And it was five minutes in. I was like, Oh, this is nothing but an optical illusion. Mm. It is it yeah. so sad. <laughs> That's what and the that, process that was... Sorry. No, go on, go on. Go ahead. No, you go, ahead. you go. No, I just wanted to note it's so let's funny go, that let's that's go clam like, chowder boy. Yeah, let, yeah, clam yeah, okay. chowder boy. Okay, surfer dude. Uh, <laughs> listen, it's yeah, but that's like what the process has been on the series so often. I think it's just funny that like every time we make an episode, part of our process is like getting ready. I think for for that inevitable feeling of like this is not the one, you know. Hmm. All right. All right. Fair enough. Uh, Carrick, uh, do you have one for yourself that you were like, oh, man, that's mm. surprising or that's. Uh, yeah, I think that the one that was most surprising to me is our first episode, the Barnyard Dog Man, because yeah, that's, that's probably one. the most I, I really do struggle to find a dog man photograph that has been circulated more than that photograph. Hmm. I I remember being like eight years old at my cousin's house, like, you know, spending our hour allowed on the laptop and like seeing that photo when we were looking up cryptid stuff. Wow. 
Wow. And like all the time, all the time. It circulates around a little bit less these days, I would say, but go back like 10 years, that thing was everywhere. And um, I think just how quickly I was able to deduce how this photo was made mm. is kind of what shocked me because what it said to me instantly was, yeah, this hasn't been done before, at least not on like a popular platform, because if it had, we wouldn't be sitting here trying to figure this case out. We would already know. And uh, yeah, so I, I think that one probably struck me, really struck me as like, this is exactly why we want to do this series kind of thing. That's awesome. That's awesome. The other thing I want to point out about the man wolf files is uh, it's, it's also a, a pretty solid uh, little interview show going on too. For some mm. of the episodes, you, you have some, some good interviews. You got, uh, let's see, you got Nash Hoover on uh, and uh, he's got an interesting uh, chat about, was it in, I think it was about an unreleased uh, chasing legends episode. Yeah, yeah. it was. Yeah. Um, it was, I think between the time they filmed the, sh the what is it, like four pilot episodes mm -hmm. from like years ago that are on YouTube. Maybe three. I think it's actually three. Yeah. Three pilot episodes that are on YouTube. And of course, mm -hmm. last year or year before then, I think last year it was, um, they did their kind of more official four pilot episodes that were more circulated and more well known. And in between that time, I think is when they filmed this uh, Wisconsin episode. Okay. And um, it was interesting to us because this is one of it was in the episode um the creature of crane's hollow which is an episode mm. where we spent a lot of time talking about quadrupedal reports mm -hmm. which is kind of interesting because when i think the typical person thinks of like a man wolf sighting they don't think of a thing that's on all fours they think of your typical werewolf sort of thing and uh so we we really thought that would be a good idea to kind of you know let's fit in two or three more cases in there to kind of talk about precedents that exist for quadrupedal sightings. And the thing with the Chasing Legends episode was uh, nothing really significant aside from this happened on the investigation. So they treated it like a research trip instead of an episode sort of thing. Right. So uh, I don't know if they had the footage still, but they still have photographs and stuff from it. They found just these massive, obviously quadrupedal uh, trackways. Of, They're of huge. Holes, they, were, they were huge. Yeah, they were absolutely huge. And I had actually... I never got a cast, but I got really good photos of the cast. And uh, I was going to university in my second year at the time and actually sent them to one of our wildlife professors there. And uh, they believed that it was Grey Wolf. Um, mm. But I don't think those photos had proper size comparison. So I'm not sure how much that might have influenced what they said it was. Uh, of mm. course, that being said, Grey Wolves and... Uh, oh, I forget what the other kind is called. There, there's two separations of wolf worldwide and half okay. of it is gray wolf because that's the north okay. american european variety so to say gray wolf is also kind of a general statement it's it's to say this is a wolf that's of the lineage that comes from the western world okay. um you know it doesn't say what sub variety of gray wolf that might be uh so we know it's probably a wolf if it is canine and it appears very clear to be canine but specifics aside from that the height of this animal and things like that are still not known but it was mm. interesting because it was in an area that had dogman sightings and you know nash explains this but he you know he basically says what we thought was significant was that uh we were not under the impression seeing them that this is you know a dogman track it's clearly that of a very large wolf but maybe this is our dogman maybe mm. we have actually found what we set out to find here an explanation for these local occurrences sort of thing and uh, of course, that's also a very important aspect, I think, of manual files, kind of looking into that sort of, uh, well, we'll say misreading of evidence sort of thing. So all the, you know, you're pouring over tons and tons of photographs and reports and, and all that for this series. Have you found anything yet where you're like, you know, we can't really disprove this? I, I would say like two things so far. Yeah, there's two things. There's um Enlighten me. <laughs> Tell well, me more. <laughs> well, okay. So Eli's like, they're all 110% fake, so I don't know oh, what you're wait. talking about. <laughs> Hold on one second. <laughs> 
he okay, left. Right. Give me one sec. You're good. You're good. Okay, there we go. That's right. good. Um, so two episodes so far, which are episode uh, five and episode seven, which is mm. uh, episode seven is the creature of Crane's Hollow, and episode five is the Fen Werewolf, and I would say way more the Crane's Hollow creature than the Fen Werewolf because the Fen Werewolf, I am not willing to say that we have proven it's a hoax. I don't think we have, but Eli especially highlights in the episode. Uh, it's important to note that that photograph first made it to the internet, or I should say those three photographs made it to the internet on April 1st of uh, 2008. I think it was something like that. And that's pretty like, okay. 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 Interesting. You know, that's, yeah. And you know, Eli even says in the episode, that's where the story was like, okay, mm -hmm. pump the brakes. Mm. That's weird. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. But if you asked me how it was hoaxed, I've got nothing. I have mm. no idea if it's a suit. It's a really good looking suit. Um, it's a, it's not your typical bought a Walmart werewolf mask hoax. It's somebody who put oh. in, um, you know, I, I would say some considerable effort, although not beyond the realm of possibility to any extent, just more than I would expect maybe from the typical internet hoax. Um, and that's if it's a costume. I, I don't believe that I'm convinced it's not digitally edited either. Uh, one thing that I've noticed since making the episode about it in particular is the fact that in one of these pictures where this subject's kind of stepping into frame, there's like this weird motion blur that just doesn't look normal to me. Yeah. It almost looks too yeah. linear. And as a graphic designer, I kind of recognize that linearity when I go to like, okay, that should fix that put like a motion blur filter on something. It, mm -hmm. it doesn't look real. It just, because it's moving a fake image around essentially, right? Okay. So it reminds me a bit of that. There's a few other things about it, but I don't know how it was hoaxed. The Crane's Hollow Creature, I have no idea what that is. Uh, it's weird. Yeah, it, it is weird. I don't know how it would have been hoaxed definitively if it is one. And I quite frankly don't see any signs that would lead me instantly to believe that it is a hoax. Wow. Yeah. That is very, very interesting. Mm -hmm. um, and we won't mention names, but I'm, I'm really curious. So the, oh, I'm going to get so, well, let's just go for it. So the dog man <laughs> community seems like they're a community where they really like dog man, mm -hmm. like a mm -hmm. lot. And it's like, they well, just say they really like Dogman a lot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Have you gotten any backlash from this series? I'm just curious, like people being like, hey, you're getting too close to the truth there, man. Wolf Files. <laughs> <laughs> you know, have you gotten anything about that? No. Um, no. No. Okay, good. Because you and I... Where, did I. where did you go? There I am. <laughs> Sorry. <There you> <laughs> I, I was looking at the Man Wolf photos because i was like i don't remember the crane's hollow that it's is the, a weird photo the beetle one it's, yeah. it's the arch yeah, found, back one, right yeah 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 which um, was no i have I, wanna... I haven't gotten anything i i got one actually before all this started in 2020 a mutual oh. acquaintance of me and carrick's uh dr john stamey told me not to mess with dog man not to, I, I don't am. know this That's story. Not man. to mess with Dogman, like not. Yeah, because I, I asked him. I said, "What do you think about Dogman?" He said, um, "Don't mess with it. Don't mess with it. You don't need to mess with that." Wow! Wow! Like, you're getting too. Close and here to I am, messing. Maybe because he knew that it was all fake. <laughs> maybe <laughs> and knew that maybe. I would be disappointed. Well, see, the <laughs> thing is, all right. Here's my stance. All right, everyone's gonna come out of listening to this episode thinking oh eli's just a dumb skeptic who doesn't believe in anything else. and let's just say being a skeptic is not dumb i mean it's okay to you know yeah, yeah. that yeah but go go ahead yeah um, because i've i okay well personally i've never bought into the dog man theory the one as far as i can tell that was kind of created by Linda Godfrey and her Beast of Bray Road book in the early 90s. Um, in, in the sense that it was an evolutionary kind of tract that led to a bipedal canine type creature. 
Mm. I've never bought that. I've never believed that Dogman was its own thing separate from werewolves. Because, I mean, really, the only difference is that you didn't see it transform, right? And there's been reports where people have said that they've seen people transform into wolves or vice versa, you know, and then when transformed, there really isn't a difference, you know, Be- and, you know, we can get into the type ones or the type twos of the different dog man, so but really, types, yeah. I mean, but really though, like if we're dealing with something like a possession case or some sort of demonic black magic thing, I don't see why they would all look the same. There, there wouldn't be a necessary, you know, if you're transforming into an unnatural creature, not one, two people are going to transform into the exact same thing, you know, mm. yeah, at least in my opinion. I, but there's not really a science to that, though. You know, this is all conjecture, but that's my personal theory is that these are werewolf creatures, They that they don't okay. just exist out there in the world. That like right now, there might not be any dog men in the world right now. They might be people. But tonight, when it's dark out, you know. So maybe they might more like a, a Rougarou type deal. Yeah, kind yeah. of. Yeah. Yeah. Because I don't think it's necessarily limited to the full moon either. And the Rougarou isn't either, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, right. So I, I don't. I think it's all up to whatever deals people are making with whatever entities. And that's, that's what governs their personal rules on whatever's happening. It's an interesting take on it. Thank you for sharing that Eli. Carrick, do you have uh, any interesting takes on what you think Dogman is? If you think it's a, could actually be a real thing or anything to add to that? I've got um, no concrete opinions of my, own okay and I, I would say only because i'm not even convinced that that dog man exists um not convinced that there's nothing going on because i think there is something going on but what it is i'm not sure uh but i've come across a few really interesting ideas that haven't really gotten out into the sphere of discussion yet for a variety of reasons uh there's a there's yeah that's the creature of cranes hollow right there yeah that's it which is so funny i was going to mention we um we got one of my uh my friends who does great artwork uh her name's hannah she did uh two pieces of art for the series so far and we're gonna have her do more for the next batch that we do and um she did a fantastic one that looks just like this but it was based on a description of a different sighting from one of linda godfrey's books and the book noted specifically mm-hmm. that the animal which looked basically like a very large wolf was arching its back the way that a cat does when it's surprised Mm. and Mm. when i read that description i was like that is exactly what i see in the crane's hollow photo but they're two different cases they have no relation to each other aside from subject matter um so that's interesting i'm not really sure what that says it's another reason why it kind of leaves me scratching my head a little bit because it's so specific in that description um no, so two two theories that I've come across. Um, this person wants to remain anonymous, so I won't name them. But sure. there is a, uh, and this is hard to do, I'll tell you that, to get a hold of this kind of person. Uh, there is an, a Native American researcher who I've talked to on a few different uh, projects that I've done. And at one point, because I had uh, seen a post in the Dogman group about supposed Native American Dogman art, but the source wasn't linked. And so there was this huge argument over whether or not it was even real. Okay. And I just thought, you know what? I'm in contact with this person. Let me ask this question. And so I, I went up to this person and I said, Hey, um, you know, not just in your tribal culture, but you know, this person also studies tribal culture all across North America. It's kind of one of their fortes. Are there stories about these wolf human hybrids because i know that's not skinwalker get translated into that but it's not right, really right. skinwalker supposed to be you know stuff mm-hmm. like that and um i'm not saying that she is 100 percent correct on this but what she told me was there is this phenomenon that some of the tribes are very familiar with wherein apparently again according to her and I'm sure that this part of this happened because, you know, this happens in situations like this when a lot of native Americans were uh, pushed out of their territory during the colonial era, there were a lot of them, of course, who decided, well, okay, reservation then when that was set up 
some apparently were like, no, I'll, I'll stick to just, I don't care if it's in an organized social structure or not. I'd rather remain in the woods and where I've been in the open nature area sort of thing, mm. which is kind of, you know, there's a, there's an important placement on that in, in a lot of tribal cultures. And what I was told was that a lot of these, uh, what she referred to as what sometimes the slang term wild native, um, adorn themselves with animal headdresses as a kind of symbol of the, of the connection to nature. And she said a very common one is the head of a wolf. And her suggestion was that a great deal of dogman sightings might be people in these more remote areas where sightings happen, running across cultural descendants of the original breakoffs who formed these wild groups and maybe the fleeting glimpses of wolf-like heads on human-like bodies that maybe aren't as detailed in sightings uh, are not werewolves, but people wearing the heads of wolves as headdresses, oh. um, which I thought was interesting. And hmm. I, it's very hard to find Native American researchers to talk to. So this is the opinion of one person. Yeah, and I'm not saying that I believe that that is the case sure. or that that isn't the case. It's just information that I got. And I think it's a, it's, kind of interesting to, to mull that around a little bit. The other theory, which I, I guess I kind of formulated, but it's more like I kind of came across it, I think. Mm -hmm. And it's not really a theory. It's, it's just something really interesting, I think, is I first started thinking about this reading one of Linda Godfrey's books. And there was just so many reports that, yes, describe like a dog-like snout and German shepherd ears, but they'll also liken what they saw to being rat-like or even like kangaroo-like oh, in weird. some circumstances. Okay. Um, and that got me thinking, what if, if there is such thing as dog, man, it's not canine, it's just canine-like. And if so, what would that be? I actually had someone email me um, from Poland asking about this. And one thing he said was, is there anything in the fossil record that you think would explain the evolution of dog, man? And as far as wow. canines becoming upright, mostly no. I think that in the fossil record, there is some uh, some cranial growth that is similar to what happened to primates when they became bipedal, but there's no actual evidence that bipedalism was achieved in any canines. Hmm. But there is one thing that I thought was so interesting, like blew my mind interesting. There is a prehistoric species of kangaroo from Australia called the Prosoptodon. And Prosoptodon, if you take its pouch away, it is a dog man. It has the weirdly bending legs. It's got those kind of, you know, kangaroos, if you look at one, especially a male, like from the front, they are massive in like their chest and their biceps. They have a very like overly wide frame from the front if they stand up on their hind legs. And Prosoptodon, uh, from our understanding, had a more upright posture than a lot of kangaroos now, which more, you know, are kind of bent down have, hmm. uh, you know, that sort of canine like face with the, the sharp ears and the snout, but not entirely canine, almost rodent looking. It has a long tail. And if you had no idea what to expect from either an upright kangaroo or an oversized one that also looks different from modern kangaroos, and you had no idea what prosoptodon was, especially. And I'm not saying that dogman is prosoptodon, because that's an Australian, you know, thing. We have no evidence for fossil kangaroos in North America. But in terms of like, well, where is dogman in the fossil record? It's like, yeah, like that's there's there's an even better one that's like a more recent uh okay. heavy art version of it. If you go into like Google images and just look up prosoptodon, there's this one that's a comparison with the size of a human, and that specific interpretation was one that I saw and I was like, yeah, man, that's, that's like a, that's pretty close to a werewolf. Wow. Um, of course, you know, this image right here portrays it a little bit more bent down than some images do, which maybe would give the impression more of a kangaroo than of a, of a werewolf. Right. Right. But, you know, seeing that head on in a forest in North America, be weird, dude. Uh, it would be weird. So yeah. I don't think Prosoptodon is dog man. But I find it interesting that we have something that close to dogman descriptions in the fossil. Totally. Oh, man, that's weird. Yeah, that is that is the first time I've ever heard of that. That's mm. that's pretty cool, Kirk. Yeah. Um, did you when you're looking through uh different cases and doing all your research, 
Have you f- uh, found yourselves going to any resources over and over again that you could recommend uh, for the listeners to check out to do with Dogman and stuff? We went through quite a variety of them. You might have, Eli, yeah. because you're doing a lot of story research. So I'm sure you came across similar websites and things like that. Or even like um, books that you could recommend. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. See, I don't know. I just recommend anything by Linda Godfrey. Totally. Yeah, yeah. I would Good too. call. Good yeah. call. Especially, <laughs> especially the Beast of Bray Road book. Because that was the first, that was her first foray into anything, I think, paranormal and cryptozoological related, as well as that kind of brought Dogman, the whole Dogman phenomena to the forefront, you know? Uh, so it's a pretty seminal and important work. I mean, yeah, I was surprised reading it and seeing what we all, you know, common theories about Dogman and even the name Dogman all stem to that book. You know, yeah. they all go back to that book. So I think anyone who wants to get into researching Dogman and things like that, they should start there <laughs> with that book. Rockin'. Agree. This this Very is good. the only one I've read by her is this one, the Michigan Dogman, Werewolves and Unknown Canines across the mm-hmm. USA. This is sort of an expansion of the Beast of Bray Road book in the sense that she visits Bray Road very briefly in this book, but this is essentially dedicated to the rest of the mainland United States. Um, you know, you have it break down basically by region east of the Mississippi between, uh, you know, Ohio and and state X over in the Midwest and things like that. So it's, mm-hmm. it's really, it's very, there's a whole chapter on Texas for that matter. It's, oh, it's I'm very, sure of it. Yeah. Yeah. It's very, very comprehensive. There's tons of really cool, like eyewitness sketches. Uh, she's a wonderful illustrator as well. She's made her own pictures based on eyewitness descriptions and she is just, she's fantastic. She's great. So mm. I think that that makes it more of an interesting read too. It, it makes it a very atmospheric one as well. I would say it's That's really, awesome. really good. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you for those recommendations. Guys, this has been a super fun chat. Um, I love seeing all the stuff that you are both, um, both involved with. Uh, But Eli, I need to take a few minutes because listeners would be like, you had Eli on, you didn't talk about that. Is there anything cool coming up that you can, you can share for, for any uh, beyond the trail or is that pretty some hush is it more hush hush we don't want to um (laughs) (laughs) Uh, (laughs) i don't want you i don't want to get you in trouble so yeah no you won't um okay beyond the trail there's some really cool stuff coming up and Mm. um Listen, I will put it this way. We are planning a sequel to something that hasn't even come out yet. So. Oh, whoa. That's cool. <laughs> and, um, wow. and then on top of that, uh, there may be a new Small Town Monsters YouTube series coming out fairly hmm. soon. I don't know. There's not really a time frame to that, but there are some big things happening. Wow. Like, I haven't been this excited about research in so long and and this is like it's it's gonna be really cool so um i don't want to say anything else so i love it i love it and it carrick any uh any cool other things coming uh down the pipeline from crash course or is it full speed ahead for manual files right now well we're finishing up uh, this next episode coming out on Monday is the last one for season one. Right. Uh, I am going to the uh, the Champ Day Festival oh, over nice. in uh, Port Henry in New York, so that'll be yeah. cool. Um, Very good. And is that this month? I, I, in terms of, yes, it is this month. It's this weekend, actually. Oh wow! Oh darn! Those oh, guys. Um, yeah, I know. I was I was hoping, but it, it's funny. Like a lot of people who were gonna come, who I know, had to cancel. Uh, Shatan, who we had on our show, Manual Files, just had to cancel, unfortunately. So I'll kind of be soloing it, aside from Paul Bartholomew, because I that's the only guy that I know there now. But that's fine. Um, in terms of projects, there's a few things that I I uh, hoping to to kind of really get full steam ahead on soon. Um, one of those things is I want to see if I can organize a uh, a sequel to the hampton catamount since that was yeah. the documentary where we actually got some really interesting evidence we have a short documentary coming out probably in the next month here 
on Wahila sightings in Massachusetts that we actually got to go and investigate. So that was Ooh, that was really fun. Wow. Um, okay. We just finished filming that almost a week ago. Now we could go tomorrow. It would have been. Um, and I've got a few series. I'm kind of dipping my toes a bit more into documentary series because those have been really fun to make. Yep. And one of the ones that I want to make is a uh, cryptid feline series. Mm. And the working title right now is Hellcats. And that is nice. one that uh, me and Nash are currently working on together. Oh, cool, and, dude. Uh, okay. Yeah. Very so cool. It, it'll, it'll be kind of in the same vein as uh, if you've seen PBS's Monstrum on YouTube. It's in the same vein as that kind of show where a lot of it's kind of uh, – talking about stories of these cryptids and some artwork is involved and oh nice it's it's almost like you're watching a uh like let's say you had an episode on the beast of exmoor it would be like here's a 15 minute beast of exmoor 101 sort of thing i love that mm. that's that's exciting that'll be a very cool series uh man you guys are rocking uh take a few minutes to go through how people can keep up to date best with uh with what you're doing carrick will have you go first sure well the best way to do it is on um crash course cryptozoology on youtube which has two sister channels one of which is a podcast one of which is one specifically for like all the documentaries we make which is basically anything aside from the normal videos and there's also a facebook page called uh excuse me, called Crash Course Cryptozoology Research and Education. And I'm not on it much, but if you want to like reach me personally, if Facebook doesn't work for some reason, I'm also on Instagram. So there's that. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Listeners, subscribe to all three of those channels because they are uh, amazing. If you're listening to this, you really should be um, on all of Crypt uh, Carrick's stuff as well because it's it's Thank awesome you. stuff. Eli, uh, how can people keep up to date with with what you got going on? Sure, I would say uh, maybe for cryptozoology stuff, uh, subscribe to Small Town Monsters. Uh, really, mm -hmm. that's where a lot of my efforts are going to. So uh, there, and then if you would like to keep up with me personally, uh, check out my Instagram. Uh, that's at the Eli Watson and I just share photos and stuff. Perfect. And I'll Thank put you. the link, I'll put the link for your King Kong playthrough on YouTube in the show notes. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I have something it's to awesome, tell you dude. about that off what? air though. <laughs> I have something oh, no. to tell you about that off air. It has to be Rub off row. air. All right. Well, hey, listeners, <laughs> sorry, you're going to miss out on this story. <laughs> but um, all right. Well, thanks so much for coming on, guys. And everyone, go check out the Man Wolf Files on uh, Crash Course Cryptozoology, the documentary channel. Correct? Yes. Right. Yes. Okay, very good. I'll have the link to the show notes there. But thanks so much for coming on, guys. Thank thanks for listening to the Bigfoot Society podcast. Please take a few minutes to review the show on iTunes, five stars, as it does help us get into the eyes and ears of more listeners on iTunes. Uh, that will help us just get bigger and bigger and get even better quality guests for future shows. Uh, also, if you have any Bigfoot encounters or cryptid encounters, please send your stories and uh, audio and photos, whatever you've got, over to BigfootSociety at gmail.com. If you'd like to become more involved with Bigfoot Society and get some extra content, we do have a Patreon uh, where you can get all sorts of cool things. For example, for $7 a month, you get extra Bigfoot Society content, uh, usually interviews, but other things as well. You get a sweet membership card and a vinyl sticker that I send to you in the mail. You get access to the Bigfoot Society after show which is an extra interview after the main interview with the weekly guest. And usually they are up for uh, Patreon members to be in that extra show segment with them and me. And you get to ask your uh, question live to them and get an answer from the guest, which as you've seen what guests we've had in the past, this could be a really big deal. There's also a private discord where you can get involved with uh, talking to me one-on-one -on -one and the community there and that's always a great time you can find the patreon at www.patreon.com forward slash the bigfoot society uh, we're very thankful for all our supporters that we have in so many different ways and appreciate uh, all our listeners coming back 
week after week to listen to more cryptozoology-based interviews. Uh, Thanks so much for listening, and we'll see you next time. The views and opinions expressed are those of the guest and do not necessarily reflect the official policy or position of Bigfoot Society. Any content provided by our guests are not intended to malign any religion, ethnic group, club, organization, company, individual, or anyone. Thank you. Hey, before you go, breaking news. I've been invited by the Van Meter Visitor Festival uh, September 24th of this year to speak. Uh, I'm super excited. It'll be my first speaking engagement. I'm going to be speaking on uh, specifically what happened to the Iowa Bigfoot Information Center. Uh, It's going to be a fun one. A lot of uh, fun information I've been doing about 1970s uh, Bigfoot researchers. So definitely come on over to beautiful Van Meter, Iowa on 924-2022, right outside of uh, West Des Moines, Des Moines, Central Iowa. $2 $2 to get in, super worth it. There's a ton of other really great speakers there uh, this year. Uh, Laura Cram is going to be one of them. Um, you don't want to miss it. It's going to be a good time. Also, I'll be selling a uh, very unique design, festival only, uh, then it's not available anywhere else, by Jonathan Dodd. Uh, my take of a uh, of an old... Uh, WrestleMania poster. So you have to go to at Bigfoot Society on Instagram and scroll back a little bit to see what I'm talking about. But uh, wow, it, it's it's going to be a rocking t-shirt and you're not going to want to miss your chance to pick one of those up. So thanks again for uh, listening all and uh, hope to see you at the Van Meter Visitor Festival in beautiful Van Meter, Iowa, 924-22, uh, coming up quick. <laughs>